I'm gonna ask a question to the audience out there. So if you're listening in the car, this is gonna be a really tough one to respond to, but you can do your best. And if you're following along on YouTube, you let us know down below in the comments section. Are you confident in Julian Arosa as almost a minus 300 to get a win over Steven Peterson coming up this weekend? Because that is what we are faced with. Juicy J representing Extreme Couture taking on Fortis MMA's own Ocho Peterson. And for the Ocho, he had a really long layoff between fights. I mean, he lost... Uh, you know, a couple in a row. Luis Pena loses one to Alex Caceres. Then he takes on Martin Bravo Ooh. and knocks him out with a spinning back fist and wins a performance bonus. And then between that fight, two years and three months ago, to his last fight, which was about seven months ago, against Chase Hooper, a litany of injuries. There were bone chips and an elbow that had to be removed. There was a COVID issue. And then there was another issue that he didn't really talk about on any of his interviews. They just kept saying undisclosed injury and he wouldn't talk about it himself. So it was a minor tear inside. Something, but he comes out his last time out, takes on Chase Hooper, Hooper, and put himself into some spots that a lot of people wouldn't against Chase Hooper, and had a lot of success in them. So for Steven Peterson, he's gotten the win in his last two fights. He's coming in as a sizable underdog against Julian Arosa, who has had three chances in the UFC, is four and one in his last five, and if you look at the loss, one against Sung Woo Choi, well that's fine, and then he gets the win over Charles Jordan's last time out in a fight that. He wasn't winning until he did. Like, that was pretty fun. And Matt, before I hand it off to you, you can see it up there in the graphic on the first one. There's an asterisk next to both of the weigh-ins. Julian Arosa had a catchweight fight that was on short notice but planned at 150 pounds. So he weighed in at 149.5. Ocho missed weight his last time out, weighed 148.5. There's a set of rules that our universe has to follow for everything to work. And one of those rules is that if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. And if that's true, Julian Arosa should be able to beat Steven Peterson. Because if you can beat Charles Jordan, you can certainly beat Steven Peterson. Like, I understand we're both concerned about the odds and whatnot. But let's just call a spade a spade. Julian Arosa went out there, ate bombs from a very dangerous and young power puncher who has a wide variety of strikes, goes to the body, goes to the head, and who in his own right has a fairly good gas tank, which is wild because Julian Arosa beat him down with so much pressure that he made him have a bad gas tank. Okay, we were all there. I'm not gaslighting anyone right now. Steven Peterson beat a 19-year-old in his last fight. That's cool and all, but like... Chase Super to me is like, a, he's like a rookie that your favorite basketball team drafts in like the 20s. He's coming off the bench. You're excited about the promise. But every time he comes into the game, the other team goes on like a 10-0 run and they immediately got to get him out. It's like, okay, that was fun. But there's some holes in his game. Chase Hooper's the type of guy that the UFC should cut just to do him a favor, to give him a regional deal, to build himself back up. Because Hooper is a classic Sage Northcutt example of, hey, you're young. You're exciting. You're pretty good with a microphone in your hand. Let's push you a lot. I just can't put a lot of stock into Steven Peterson beating Chase Hooper. And don't even get me started because you know what's wild? Beating Chase Hooper might be more impressive than beating Martin Bravo. Because Bravo in the UFC was not very good at all. Now, if we're going to give Peterson his credit because we have to say this, his knockout win over Bravo is one of my favorite knockouts ever. He counters a spinning back fist with a spinning back fist, a galaxy brain moment, and it lands in the most impressive fashion possible. Just to me, I know you can't always go off guys and their last performance, but Julian Rosa looked as good as he's ever looked against one of his harder opponents he's had in the last few years, where Steven Peterson was in bad positions against a guy who isn't really UFC caliber, if we're all being honest. Just, for me, I agree with you 100%. It's odd matchmaking for where both guys are in their careers. Julian Arosa does not have a good chin. You've seen that time and time and time and time again. Like, I, I can't stress that enough. And then all of a sudden, he fights Charles Jordan, and I don't know what he ate that week, but it definitely paid out. So the weird thing for uh, Erosa, we talked about this earlier on in the card. If you missed the video, go back and check it. It was about Jalatan Almeida. Julian Erosa is one of those guys, and if I could stand up and give like a Luke Thomas-esque breakdown, or if I had the old Fox Studios, because they used to like to do this with the UFC. When he comes in to strike, he switches stances as he strikes, and he moves his head real weird. Like, he has a unique style of his own. It's very Julian Arosa-esque. And I think the guys at Extreme Couture, Coach Eric Nixick, they've really been able to fine-tune his defenses and accentuate some of those strikes that he's able to throw. Because is one of those guys that is kill or be killed. He has good submissions. He has good striking power. And... 
In some fights, he just turns it on as the fight goes on. Sean Woodson is the fight that really kind of wins out. The Woodson fight, the Gerald Dan fight. You look at those, you go, geez, like this guy on his best day, maybe he could fight for a no, title. No, let's not. And then you look at Julian Rosa on his worst day, and I mean, he gets knocked out by Julio Arce. He gets knocked out by Devontae Smith. He gets knocked out by Bobby McIntyre. He loses to Patty Pimblett. He gets knocked out by Taruto Ishihara. He's over on the Ultimate Fighter fighting guys like Artem Lobov and getting knocked out. So, Julian Arosa, if you don't believe me, and that's why I started the video off. If you like him as a 3-1 to one favorite, you're probably related to him. Cool. But uh, that's gonna that could bust a parlay. I, I ultimately, without even talking about them, but I will talk about them. Arosa opened at minus 235. He's a minus 286 right now. Ocho opened plus 200. He's plus 222. Over on Tapology, surprise us, it is you. Matt, I'm going to say 87.5 over under. Arosa, what are you saying? I'll say under. All right, Matt. Look at that. 886 total votes, 92% Arosa, 49% by decision, 33% by submission, 11% by knockout, the 8% that I have Ocho, 45% by decision. If I know anything about Steven Peterson, this is the fight he knocks out Julian Arosa. This is the fight where his striking's not bad, his wrestling's not bad. He just gets beat by guys that are better than him. Like, look at it. Alex Caceres. And that's most guys in the UFC level, if we're being honest. That's true. I just had a rough one right there. It was like the time that uh, Aaron Andrews, after a Boston Red Sox playoff game, she goes, Jared Saltalamacchia, what's it like to be able to beat Charleston Fist's record? And I thought, who's Charleston Fist? I thought it was Carlton Fisk. But regardless of all of that, Ocho, when he's gone up against the better guys in the division, he just hasn't come out on the winning end. And you look at the guys that he's beat in the UFC, and if we go for the last three, Matt Bissett by split decision and an ultimate fighter finale, Martin Bravo and Chase Hooper, it just really is hard. Could Ocho go out there and bust everybody's parlays this weekend? I could see it. I'm taking Julian Rosa for the sake of this show, but I am sitting back and eating pop and drinking popcorn. I think Juicy J's got this one again. You can't beat Charles Jordan and then lose to Steven Peterson. I refuse to live in a world where that is the truth. Uh, it should be a really fun fight, though, because Steven Peterson always does come to fight. And it's not like he's just going to let Julian Arosa pressure him a bunch and then he's going to wilt over and get submitted. It will be fun, but I do see the pressure of Arosa eventually winning out. And we all know what happens when his cardio advantage does kick into a fight. He is one of the better guys of going for the kill once his opponent does start to wilt under the pressure. So I do expect that from old Juicy J. Big time fight coming up this weekend. Both of us going with extreme couturist Julian Arosa with so many asterisks and cautions out there. It'll make your head spin. So let us know what you have, who you have, who's who's going to get the win. Is it going to be Ocho Peterson? Is it going to be Juicy J? Big time fights coming up. And on this main card, I mean, look, all of a sudden, Punaheli Soriano taking on Nick Maximo, you know, Nick Diaz Academy's own. And in the main event, Jack Romance and Sean Strickland, you're not going to want to miss. Keep locked in with Fight Night Picks, we always say. Let's get, get into it. it.